from Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American original. For over three decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. Thank you for joining the McLaughlin Group, a show where friends disagree agreeably. I'm your host, Tom Rogan. This week, we'll dive into the latest Democratic debate, presidential <laughs> commutations, a new national intelligence director, albeit acting, and more. Our panelists today are author and columnist Pat Buchanan, Eleanor Clift of The Daily Beast, Clarence Page of the Chicago Tribune, and Republican strategist Shermichael Singleton. Okay, let's get to issue one, Las Vegas debate. We need something different than Donald Trump. I don't think you look at Donald Trump and say, we need someone richer in the White House. Democratic presidential hopefuls debated in Las Vegas, Nevada this week. Among them, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. But what happened? Well, Elizabeth Warren relentlessly interrogated Bloomberg over his non-disclosure agreements with former female employees. Bernie Sanders suffered attacks over his health care plan and personal records. And Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar and Joe Biden presented themselves as the candidates to win independent voters. Pat, the inaugural showing for Mr. Bloomberg, how did he do? <laughs> that answers the question. <laughs> he did the worst performance of any candidate in debate since debates began with Nixon and Kennedy in 1960. You know what came out of that debate is this. Bernie Sanders is in the front position running for the nomination. He's going to go through the next 10 days to Super Tuesday, and he's going to come out of it with an insurmountable lead for the nomination, headed for the convention. He may not make it on the first ballot. His main stopper is Bloomberg, Mayor Bloomberg, who was savaged by his own competitor and his own rivals up there as a racist, sexist, misogynist oligarch. Right. And so this is the two front runners for the Democratic nomination, neither of whom I believe can unite that party. I don't know how it comes together for the fall. Eleanor. Well, I think Sanders escaped unscathed because the other candidates all trained their fire on Bloomberg, who was the new shiny object on the stage. And uh, I guess the latest reporting is his, his staff is trying to protect themselves. They say he was well briefed. <laughs> they don't know what went wrong. Uh, no, he, 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 he did not have a good performance. He should have had answers to all the questions about his uh, record, but he does provide a uh, potential alternative to Sanders. He could be the last man standing against uh, Sanders. Now, you, I think Joe Biden uh, did fine, and uh, he pointed out that the latest NBC Wall Street Journal poll has him as the only candidate beating Trump by eight points in 11 swing states. Mm. Um, supposedly, the primaries are all about electability. I think the voters didn't get the memo. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, and Elizabeth Warren did have a forceful performance. She at least gets herself back in the conversation. So on to Super Tuesday. Yeah. Sure. Hey, you know, I'm going to borrow a phrase from our friend Joe Biden. I think Elizabeth Warren beat uh, Bloomberg like a drum. <laughs> and when you looked at the former mayor of New York on that stage, he was uncomfortable. He was not charismatic. And here's a guy who we know, if you look at his previous mayoral debates uh, when he was mayor of New York, they were not very good. He did mm -hmm. not come off as someone who's relatable. He did not come off as someone that would inspire and invigorate a base of voters to go out and knock on doors, to make phone calls, to convince their neighbors to, hey, Mike is your guy. And to your point, Eleanor, the campaign should have known for months if they did internal oppo on their candidate, all of his problems, all of his flaws. They should have had answers to each and every one of those questions, and they did not. Maybe, and maybe so, he shouldn't have debated. He's not even on the ballot right. in well, Nevada. But, but you know what? <laughs> you, 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 can't, you can only skirt uh, yeah. around not presenting uh, no, yourself I, I to people for so long. And I think after spending over $400 million, people want to know what about you makes you think you're the best person to take on Trump outside of having $60 billion. And as far as I'm concerned, Bloomberg learned money may buy a lot of things, but it does not buy a great debate. And Clarence, yes. one of the things we saw, money is certainly not, at least by the appearance of that debate, going to be able to buy mm -hmm. Mr. Bloomberg the support of the Sanders supporters. That, that moment where the there was the disagreement early. about capitalism mm -hmm. and socialism yeah. mm -hmm. seemed quite a striking, speaking to that dichotomy in the party that Pat was suggesting. Yeah, you know, I, I too was amazed that Bloomberg wasn't better prepared. From what I, I understand, I mean, obviously, 
he knew what the potholes were out there. His, his staff knew. I mean, uh, his, his uh, what, back back at, at his company, uh, employees had printed some little gag booklet of right. his <laughs> objectionable quotes. I mean, it's all right. public record. The thing is, I understand that Bloomberg himself didn't want to prepare. Uh, for, for reasons of, of his own, mm -hmm. and, and you're right, it was the same Bloomberg who showed up for debates uh, there in New York meeting. He, he didn't show up, except he won in New York. Right, <laughs> right. And, and he still thinks yeah. he, can, he can win nationally. And, and the only, only other thing I just want to uh, throw out is that uh, uh, he, uh, money doesn't win everything. Uh, Donald Trump didn't uh, have as much money, or spend as much as Hillary you Clinton know, did, find, and he won anyway. Too. I find pattern. myself in uncommon agreement with Eleanor. <laughs> uh, Bloomberg should not have debated. What do they think mm -hmm. they're doing? He's not a debater. He's not charismatic mm -hmm. at all. He's not on the ballot in Nevada. He's not on the ballot in South Carolina. So they go out there and put this guy on the stage when everybody else is in mid-season form, and they cut him to bits as you knew they would. What is the matter with his people that they went ahead and did this? Well. He's run up himself to the point where he's competitive with the front runner mm -hmm. in all these Super Tuesday states. So he says, why don't I go out and get on a debate yeah. stage? Well, <laughs> well, first of all, he, presumably he has enough confidence in himself that he thought this would be a breeze, which tells sure. you something. Mistake number first. one. Yeah. Mistake number one. Uh, and you know, I don't think the voters would put up forever with him not appearing in Correct. person and being Correct. only Correct. on a television show. Mm -hmm. This is like like the Truman Show, that tele <laughs> that movie uh, a number great of years movie. ago. Yes, uh, so you can't have a fake candidacy uh, throughout. Right. But one of the telling moments is the, in the in the debate was when Chuck Todd asked if the candidate who had the most delegates or the most votes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how it was phrased. When they get to Milwaukee, should that person get the nomination, right. even if they yep. don't have the 1991 mm -hmm. required delegates? And only one person said yes, and that was Bernie <laughs> Sanders. <laughs> right. Because he is right now, he has the clearest path right. to a plurality mm -hmm. of, of candidates. And the superdelegates uh, can't weigh in until the second ballot. Is but I, I think come out. South Carolina, I think that's the biggest test for Mike Bloomberg because majority of the individuals in that audience will be African-American. And there are some very serious questions about his candidacy, his positions on yeah. race. But why is that he in I that think, debate in South well, Carolina well, he, when he's he not on the be, ballot? Pat, but, but Pat, my yeah, point yeah. is, mm -hmm. I don't think money can protect him from some of the very, very serious allegations and questions that have come about how he perceives certain people. And I think that's a benefit for President Trump. You know, he, <laughs> has, an, he has answers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like Barely. other candidates, he has evolved. And he can certainly point to his philanthropy and uh, all the causes that he's but just so All right, right. He, he was defending he, some of he those needs positions. To make, you know, he, 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 he Michael, needs to right, enough, enough, Clarence, you go. I'm not as pessimistic about black voters and and Mr. Bloomberg's chances as you are. Uh, they are, uh, and, and Bloomberg certainly isn't. Uh, he's been running around uh, uh, making friends with people like like Bobby Rush, former Black Panther congressman in, in Chicago, and other black leaders, uh, uh, black members of Congress. Et cetera, et cetera. He thinks that that one-on-one -on -one is going to provide a nice uh, a safety net for him. He may be right, he may be wrong, mm -hmm. but he has ha had experience at this. And I always think about, for, and Democrats are thinking about, how he still ha has left the safety net for them. If he has to drop out, right. he will right. give, give his right. money right. to uh, whoever. Let's, is, uh, let's assume uh, Bernie, as I think could happen, Bernie goes to the convention with a plurality, a good plurality, 40% of the vote, but not a majority. If then the establishment and they turn loose all those super delegates and they take that nomination away from Bernie, this will resemble the convention at Chicago in 68, which I attended, Tom. Yes, you did. And I was <laughs> on the 19th floor when the police and the cops in Clarence's town out there went at it in Grant Park. I'll the only you, difference was, Pat, this, this time away, it'll be inside the convention, not on the street <laughs> outside. If they take this away from the Bernie bro yeah. bros and Bernie and he's got 40% of the vote, I don't. I think the Democrats yeah. are finished. Well, Ber yeah. very quick. Ber 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 Bernie uh, will complain if he doesn't get the nomination, no matter what. Right. So I think the Democrats have to be prepared for that. But if he goes in there with 35 or 40 percent, and you have 60 or 65 percent split up among other candidates, mm -hmm. I think the super delegates can make a case that they're they're choosing a small D democratically if they don't go with Bernie. Okay. I mean, I, the, but we're, we're a long way from that. All right. <laughs> Not that well, far. Issue two, the Twitter DNI. Criminalizing homosexuality is absolutely wrong. It, it is unbelievable 
to think that in today's world, a 32-year-old man can be hanged in Iran simply for being gay. That's unacceptable. Richard Grinnell is a passionate voice for gay rights, but his appointment as acting director of national intelligence has found few liberal supporters. After all, Grinnell, a former UN spokesperson and until this week US ambassador to Berlin, is known for his aggressive Twitter exchanges with critics and his loyalty to President Trump. Regardless, he'll now be responsible for managing the nation's 17 different intelligence agencies. Eleanor, what is your read on this appointment as acting director? <laughs> this is one of Trump's uh, momentary uh, explosions. He was furious that uh, the uh, now former uh, acting uh, director of intelligence uh, had members of Congress briefed on the aggressive attempts of Russia to interfere in the 2020 election and to help reelect uh, Trump. So he basically fired the acting director, uh, and you have the intelligence community now afraid to actually uh, have honest discussions with members of Congress about the state of affairs. They canceled a briefing about uh, the world threats, which is done apparently every mm -hmm. year because Donald Trump doesn't like to hear negative things. And then he's appointed um, Ambassador Grinnell, who may be a very good advocate on gay rights, but he knows nothing about the mm -hmm. intelligence community, has no history in that, and is seen widely as a political hack. And I think Trump has even realized that to some extent. He's now saying he's going to appoint someone on a permanent basis who would have to go get Senate confirmation. Mm -hmm. Uh, right now, if you look at this administration, how many actings are there? There should be a, right. a limit the on it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> likes acting. I know. That's what okay. The Let's thing. He's right. simply a, uh, Grinnell's simply a placeholder. He's going to be in there for several weeks until you get a permanent appointee. But I can understand <laughs> Trump. I mean, the 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 McGuire's deputy went up to the Hill, the DNI, mm -hmm. and briefed them and said, you know, the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. And a day later, it's in the New York Times, the headlines, Schiff's committee and everything. This is this inner city politics going on and on and on. The deep state versus Trump, it's yeah. a battle that never and, ends. And we should say, it, it's going to turn out that the assessment, the, some of the language there, there's not actually an intelligence assessment that says Russia is actively Look, trying Russians, to make Trump Tom, win. The Russians, so some of that reporting was yeah, a little Bernie is, yeah. Tom, well, if Bernie yeah. is the nominee, I think Putin's going to have a hard decision in the general. Would, I think that's right, Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the president has shown from day one, literally, that he hasn't got much respect for our intelligence community, regardless of what he may uh, say in public statements. His actions show he's deeply suspicious of it. Somebody like this comes along, and all, all he sees is this is something else to undercut my victory against Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And so right. he had to go and shake things up all of a sudden. Right. And I mean, hey, what about the fact that our elections, and nobody now should be denying that our uh, system is being hacked by the Russians. Right. They're trying to get into it. They tried it before. They're trying it now. And, and they're going to get better at it. Yeah, Robert Mueller, when he testified on the Hill, said, was asked, are they doing this? And he says, yes, as we speak, uh, they're, they're doing it. Right. So it's not exactly news. And there is legislation that the Democratic House passed that Mitch McConnell refuses to take up in the Senate, which leads you to suspect that uh, the Republicans think that Russia's going to be on their side, and I believe okay. that's mm -hmm. the case. Well, look, I, I think, as we know, this gentleman, Mr. Grinnell, is temporary. This is not a permanent fixture. And I think sometimes folks on the left jump the gun on attacking every single thing the president does. Now, look, I'm not, were saying, too late. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying that some things aren't warranted, that some level of skepticism and criticism is not healthy of the president of the United States. That's not what I'm arguing. But every single thing, I don't see how this benefits Democrats. Do you support I, I just, the Grinnell acting appointment? Temporarily, absolutely. Why it's not? The, absurd, pres the president, the president, Eleanor, the president has every right to appoint whomever he on wants now. on a temporary uh, basis. What, what about and the White House, wait a minute, Clarence, you know, the White about, House has made it very... You think the country should be pleased at the way he's handling the this? The gentleman's going to be there for weeks, Clarence, mm. weeks. You You're going to lose sleep over uh, that? You yes, because you, yes. Uh, but, um, how long Come does it take for that 3 o'clock phone call? You know, no, no the fact mm -hmm. that, uh, of the matter is, why Why this guy? There are so many other qualified people he could have turned to, at you least has some experience. You know what, I can guarantee you this. No matter who Donald Trump would have selected a Tom on a temporary basis, people on the ideological left would have found some reason to complain I'm about not, that individual. I'm, 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 I'm right you know, this, all this, right the, Russian, <laughs> yeah. the Russian bots are coming again. The Russians are coming. They're so, here, Pat. Okay. 
what do you, look at our own record. We've got a central intelligence agency, 17 intelligence agencies. We've got the National Endowment for Democracy. You've got NGOs in all these different countries. You've got the United States dump in using color-coded revolutions to dump over governments in Georgia, Ukraine. I mean, are we serious? The Russians are interfering in our election. Everybody's right. outraged. Let's what do you think we did all during the Cold War? Mean, you mean because, because we do it, because they we, do look, it, and we shouldn't do anything about them doing it no, to us? but right. don't act so sanctimonious. No, I don't care about sanctimonious. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking about just having faith in our right. intelligence. All right, gathering services. Exactly all right, all right. All right. Let's, let's, Eleanor, come in. <laughs> so is... Are you saying we should put out the red carpet for no, the Russians? I think that's what you're up. saying. This country's I'm infantile. Okay, okay, I heard the Russians I, are interfering. Oh my lord! Does that get over it? That uh, what are they Mr. doing? McClellan, that was the statement made by the OMB director about I, uh, leaning on allies to f dig up dirt on Biden. Oh, just get over it. We do it all the time. That's your argument. But it's you know, not you one that I'm going to buy. You don't think we are? We got intelligence. We really had the German chancellor. We're listening to her phone calls. The Brazilian president. The United States. I mean, what gets me is we ought to stop any interference. But the idea right. that this is awful, what they're doing to our poor democracy. Look, we, no one has clean hands here as it pertains to interference. But I will say, I do think we should be concerned with this, primarily because what the Russians have been effective at doing is increasing internal turmoil and conflict within our country. And if you study history, that is always the end of every great society. Right. So right. put someone in charge all of the right, intelligence right. community <laughs> who knows okay. nothing about enough. any of that. Enough, area. enough, <laughs> enough, enough. One little thing. The, obviously, the intelligence community, when they get it right, doesn't tend to come public. Clarence makes a good point, though. Anyway, issue three, <laughs> rescuing Rod. So he'll be able to go back home with his family after serving eight years in jail. That was a tremendously powerful, ridiculous sentence, in my opinion. Included among a number of presidential pardons and commutations this week, former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich was released from prison. He had served eight years of a 14-year sentence for crimes including attempted extortion, the Democrat was notably recorded on an FBI wiretap attempting to sell President Obama's vacated Senate seat. But coming from a president who pledged to quote-unquote drain the swamp, some say the commutation is rank hypocrisy. Clarence, is this a commutation straight from the swamp? Let me give a, a, a disclaimer first of all. As a member of the Tribune editorial board, we were named in uh, Blagojevich's indictment because during one of his conversations, he was angry with us, and he said, how can we get the Tribune? Why don't we find a way to block their permits for Wrigley Field? So this is a, <laughs> okay. I, I want to tell you, so, so if I have a little bit of a grudge, you'll understand. But I, th I think he looks better with silver hair, don't you? He does look good, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah. Uh, do you think he deserved the commutation? Well, that question. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, of sentencing is one issue that's always debatable. I mean, the, there's, the, the standards are, are remarkably loose and, 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 and subjective. In this case, Blagojevich was so flamboyant in going around TV shows, et cetera, et cetera, talking about he it was innocent and, and, and undercutting the process that the judge, the sentencing judge, said he was asking for a long sentence. Uh, now the question is, did President Trump go out of his way here wrongly in reducing that sentence. A lot of folks in Chicago are angry. Some are, are uh, delighted that, uh, that, that mm -hmm. Rod is out. But I, I think uh, the initial sentence was long. My personal feeling is, uh, regardless of the Tribune <laughs> connection, uh, that he's served enough time. Okay. Right. Look, yeah, I think that. it's difficult mm -hmm. with white collar crime because it's nonviolent, or at least by it's violent financially, you could say. And so um, they've tr typically gotten softer sentences and every so often someone comes along like Blagojevich and they make an example out of him. So I don't, I don't think commuting it is a, a negative, but I think the overall message that the president was sending with the whole host of commutations and pardons this week was basically that government corruption, mm -hmm. this crime doesn't really matter. I mean, he's basically trying to cleanse his own background, frankly, and the people who close to him who are laboring under some of these sentences. Look, I mean, 14 years, which they gave Blagojevich, I remember we had an argument, it was an outrage. That's just unbelievable. I mean, to serve eight years in the penitentiaries was sell, I mean, trading the Senate seat for a gift. You know something happened in 1952? Eisenhower talked to Earl Warren, release your delegates, Governor Warren. Warren said, I'll do it at the convention, you get the nomination. I get the next seat on the Supreme Court, and he was Chief Justice. I mean, quid pro quo. This stuff is done. All I'm saying is, well, for heaven's sakes, eight years in a penitentiary, he, 
It's a hellish sentence. He also that shook. Is a long the, he time. also was found guilty of shaking down a children's hospital. Yeah, I'm not the, <laughs> the bargaining, the sentencing, right, right, was right, not the Lord only Jones. thing. But I, yeah. I would say, Tom, I just want to bring this to, to regular everyday people out there, right? Uh, people believe when a person commits a crime, there should be a level of punishment. People also believe when you serve your time well, you have good behavior, you should be able to return back to society, be a part of the community, return to your family. I think to Pat's point, uh, the former governor was there long enough. I actually read through a lot of different news reports that said his behavior in, in its entirety was very, very good. He improved himself. He was engaged. He even mentored fellow prisoners. So from my standard, and I think the standards of everyday Americans out there, when you do well, you improve yourself, you help others along the way, you should be allowed to reenter society. And you know how he society. came to Donald Trump's attention? His wife was on Fox that, News. That's irrelevant, <laughs> Eleanor. Look at, excuse that's me, irrelevant, look, at, Eleanor. look at the whole group that was commuted. Most of them had a Fox News connection, or they were prosecuted by somebody connected with Mueller. I mean, this was, it's basically a I'm grudge sure. wait, by wait, the wait, wait, wait a minute here. <laughs> because what about the, the African American woman who was brought to the president's attention by Kanye West and his wife, Kim Kardashian? Should he have ignored that that's also? Not who we're, no, no, no that's I'm, not, but I'm making the point. No, 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 no. I'm making the point that, and I made this point earlier, it's everything Donald Trump does is just horrible. And it's abysmal, and it's disgusting, it's despicable. We should all be outraged. And I think, again, when someone has served their time properly, you ask any regular person out there, and they will say, you know what? You've done your time. You should be able to that isn't what no. we're regardless, of, today, regardless of where the president found out I, about the individual. I am Eleanor. for justice reform. I support just what this like president has done. What he just did with this clemency group has nothing to we're do with about overall Rod, justice. Let me respond. All right, Clarence. Let, let, let me respond that very quickly. Uh, you'll be happy to know that, that, that I gave a rare praiseworthy edit column to Donald Trump for that, uh, you, uh, that Kanye West uh, <laughs> case there. Uh, but I also noted, too bad a lot of other folks who deserve the same kind of treatment aren't getting it because they haven't got a wife who can go in and, no, and has, we, has we a lot right, of privileges at we the White House. Find out. Uh, so, uh, and, and President Trump, I understand, has given fewer uh, of these uh, pardons Obama. so far wait, 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 than, than wait. others. Oh, oh, well, just about everybody. I don't I know the total record. But in any case, he's very selective because he kind of gets personally involved. Yeah. Most presidents well, have a Pat, 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 enough, well, enough. Excuse Guys, me. No, excuse Pat, me. It's I want to say one it's thing. Blagojevich appeared on The Apprentice. Say no more. Yeah. All right, Pat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about Roger Stone, all right? Just fired. He, what was he sentenced to? Three years and four months? Mm -hmm. And what that suggests is that the president was correct when he said the nine years the prosecutors demanded was an outrage. And that judge did a good thing. Does anybody complain about the fact no. or denounce the fact that Roger Stone only got three years for no. what he did? Well, President no. Trump had no. something to do what, with that, though, didn't he? I mean, it was no, he like, didn't. Clarence, no. Clarence. Come on. Okay, I'm sorry. Nope. Uh, okay. What was, what was denounced was the seven to nine years, which apparently is the official guideline. And the Justice Department policy is that they're supposed to argue for the toughest thing. Trump had no, he, he didn't really need to get involved with this because the judge was going to do the right thing. Wrong, and she but his did comment do the right was thing. correct as the judge proved. No, you don't interfere in criminal cases. Well, with the Justice he Department, can which comment is what on William a Barr, yeah. which is what <laughs> William Barr said. All right, said. Sure, Michael. <laughs> I mean, and we do know the Attorney General was not very happy about the president's right. tweet. And he did say in an interview, I don't like this level of interference. And, and I would have to agree, Pat, with Eleanor on this. The president didn't have to tweet, Pat. He didn't have to say anything at all about this. And I think he yeah, did sure, because Michael, Roger Stone's a long-term friend. And I get it. But some things you don't have to comment on. Well, look, he likes to comment on it. Why don't you give him a call, <laughs> give him a call and say, cut the tweet, okay? Do you think he'd listen to you, I would do you, that Pat, after the show. That? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, I think it's unlikely. All right. Yeah. Okay, Pat, predictions. <laughs> predictions. There's a, this is a long-term issue. The folks in eastern Oregon would like to secede from Portland and Eugene and the areas in the west and join Idaho. This is a movement that's growing in Vermont, New York, and other places of sort of red parts of blue states seceding and vice versa. I think it's a long-term historic trend in the United States. Okay, Eleanor. Growing pressure on President Obama to somehow intercede, speak out. I, I don't know to do what, but to make his voice heard in the Democratic uh, primaries. I think we will hear from him after Super Tuesday. And do you think it will be explicit in terms of criticizing Trump? No. I mean, I think uh, basically you got to trust the voters, but maybe you have to 
steer the voters in a particular way and use your influence. Okay. Sure, Mike. I'll say quickly, uh, there was a Wall Street Journal column that came out today that said 8% of African American women think President Trump is handling the economy well, but 40% of African American men think the president is handling the economy well. And so I would argue black men should be an important group to focus on going into November. Okay, Clarence. We can talk about what the actual turnout will be, but anyway, let me uh, just uh, predict that uh, uh, the uh, Trump administration is going to uh, uh, raise the profile of the, of the population bomb that's happening with Social Security and other entitlements right now as our uh, we we need more immigrants, as uh, Mick Mulvaney has been reported saying right. yep. this past week. Uh, and it's true, people have been saying this, Wall Street Journal, and others have been saying this for, for quite some okay. time. But everybody, Republicans and Democrats, kick it down the road. They are they don't want to deal with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I predict that the reporting, uh, that the intelligence community assesses that Russia is working to help President Trump explicitly win, will be shown to be wrong. Uh, that the Russians are interfering, but there is no assessment yet that they're trying to help President Trump. They might but they might not. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget the discussion continues at mclaughlin.com and check out our podcast wherever you listen to audio. You're gonna go